What's the ewer? It's a pitcher for pouring. So why is this called the Corning ewer? Was it made here? Well, that's its name because it's here in the museum in Corning. But it was made in Egypt or Iran over a thousand years ago, and that makes it very special. Are all those curvy green lines trying to tell a story? What's going on? Looking at it from the handle on the right to the left, there is a very stylized bird standing at the edge of the scene with some kind of leaves or twigs in its beak. There's another bird to the left of it, and that is landed on the rump of a four-legged animal. And you have to walk around the side of the case a little bit to see the whole of the animal. The animal's front legs have collapsed, and so we're looking at something like an eagle attacking maybe a wild goat or some similar animal. It must mean something, but we're not sure exactly what. What we do know is it was made around the year 1000, and whoever made it was as good a glass cutter as there has ever been. This is truly a masterpiece. I don't know if I'd call it a masterpiece. I mean, the glass is kind of yellowed. It even looks like it's been broken and a bunch of the pieces were glued back together. Don't look at me. I didn't do it. One of the things that goes on behind the scenes in a museum like this is we have a small laboratory with a person we call a conservator there, and his job is to spend his entire time looking after the objects in the collection. And this can go from cleaning objects to restoring objects to gluing objects together. So the conservator's job is a little bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle. Except it's a jigsaw puzzle without a picture on the cover of the box and with some of the pieces missing. The pieces of glass have been very patiently put together so that we can enjoy the beauty of the object. If you want to see the results of a conservator's hard work, take a look at another piece of green and white cameo glass. It's number 16 in this case. 